Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is our program, Socialing the Distance, and today we're featuring Chase Ely. She is the 2019 Indoor and Outdoor Champion in the Shot Put and the 2020 Indoor Champion in the Shot Put. Chase, great to see you. Hi, thanks for How having are you? me. <laughs> and you just you just finished up practice with uh, with you. Now, is Ryan there? Does he go to, does he, is he at your workouts? Most yeah. days? Okay. 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 Yeah. And we're, we're pretty, we're being pretty, we're, we're doing all the CDC guidelines and stuff, but sure. it's still rough, but we, we, we're making it work. <laughs> and now where are you based out of? Uh, Phoenix. Okay. Okay. Um, when did you first realize the pandemic was going to be an issue? Um, I would say after like, because we were all, you know, like saying it'll blow over, it'll blow over. And then come about May, we were like, okay, it's not going to blow over, like time to adjust. And then um, we, it was rough at first, like the adjustments didn't come smooth, but yeah, it was, it was pretty soon we realized we might have to figure it out. And that's when we started training different and having to not, you know, be at our normal uh, college because they closed and mm -hmm. It, it got pretty real pretty fast here. <laughs> um, what was your first reaction when you found out the Olympics were going to be postponed? Um, I was upset <laughs> because I'd been, I knew I was like last year I was, I was on, I was in a really good position, like coming out of indoors and winning. And I was like already, you know, that, that kind of, momentum out of indoors is just great sure. and I just I, I didn't get to utilize it in a 2020 season and that really sucked uh but when I found out it was like postponed I was honestly in the moment I was happy because at the time we found out it was postponed I wasn't feeling as good anymore as I had okay. been at the beginning of the season so like there was part of me that was like okay good now I have time to get back on track from getting off track a little Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it it's like a punch in the gut kind of. Sure, sure. What um how did you get involved in the shot put? Um, it was just like a thing to do in between sprinting okay. <laughs> in high school. Um, and my sister did it and I needed another event. So she was like, just do this real quick. And I was like, okay. And then it ended up being <laughs> my second best event actually. But then I got, when I was getting recruited in college, it was like a lot of uh, people talking to me about multis. Mm -hmm. And that was just like a lot, like multi seemed like a lot. And then sprinting also seemed like a lot. So I was like, okay, I talked to a couple of throws coaches and they were like, yeah, like, you know, why run and puke when you can throw and eat? And I was like, that sounds like me. <laughs> and I wasn't that passionate about it at first actually. Mm -hmm. But about my junior year of college, I was like, I like this. <laughs> I think I like this. What changed in your junior year of college? Um, it was like the, I was actually transitioning into a new coach for my last year. So it was like the end of my junior year. Um, Lucas McKay became my coach. And I had a really good coach before, but like my motivation wasn't there and my love for it wasn't quite there. Uh, but then when I got a new coach, he kind of like forced me to, to like do like put more effort into it than I was. I had never really applied myself fully. I feel like, and then I started learning about the sport. You know, I didn't even know people like Ryan and Joe and all them like, and my, my new coach and I remember my training partner at the time, Nick Miller, he's a, the UK's really good hammer thrower. Mm. He was like, yeah, you're, putting like 50% effort in. So let's see what it would be like if you actually tried. And then, but he was like, he was like, it's ridiculous that you don't know all these people. And he was just telling me all these people. And I was like, I don't, I didn't even know this was like a professional sport. Like I didn't even know people did this. And yeah. so I, I learned about good old Valerie Adams and I was watching her yeah. and I was like, she's strong and beautiful and powerful. And I was like, I want to be that. And so she kind of was one of my turning over factors too. seeing like someone like that being really good. I was like, heck yeah. And now I talk to her. So that's weird. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. But 
Yeah, it was a, it's a bit, I think people expect me to have had like a longer relationship with shot than I have. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, you can go. (laughs) Did um, I I see your PBs in the hammer, the javelin and the 20 pound. Do you still do those events? Are those, are those more as you, a period of time or. Well, in college, my new college coach was a hammer thrower. So I had never thrown hammer before. So I just threw it my last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now uh, when, well, before uh, COVID, um, Ryan coaches at Mesa Community College. Sure. Um, and that's where we train. And so sometimes with the Mesa Community College kids, I do throw hammer like as like kind of like a, like a relax your mind kind of thing. And it's it's really fun. Like I just do it for fun. Like I don't like ball out or anything because I don't want to yeah. get hurt. But yeah, I, I just do those like that. But javelin ruined my elbow. So I can't really mess with that anymore. But okay. Okay. yeah, I miss javelin a lot. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah. Did you like the 20 pound weight? No. <laughs> Man handles you. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think I hate it as much as most people do, but, but I, I, I think I could have been good at hammer and weight had I done them all of college, but I only did them my last year. Mm -hmm. What was, um, in 2019, you won the indoor and the outdoor. Um, Talk to me about the outdoor meet. What was that like? And what was the winning like? Um, I remember, so like, before indoors, I didn't have a lot of confidence. Like Ryan spent a lot of time. Like that was like, I think most of our work was spent being like, you can do this just because it's a bigger meat doesn't change anything. And I remember my, uh, we, when we were there, it was raining really bad, real bad at outdoors. Like the, I remember the ring was puddled and, and, um, I remember just sitting there like I can throw in any ring, like blah, blah, blah. Like, because Ryan had just instilled this confidence in me that like, you know what you're doing. Like, I don't need to sit here and baby you like you got it. And I was like, yeah, I got it. Like, so I think I went into outdoors, like with way more confidence in indoors and indoors helped that. But I just remember seeing like all the rain and everything was so hectic and all this crazy stuff. And I was just like, I knew I was prepared for all that because like Ryan's been through all of it times 10. And so we had already been like through all this stuff before. So I was ready. I threw in the rain. I killed it. But outdoors was like definitely a whole different animal because making the world team, it it it, it scares you a little. <laughs> like when there's something, it's not just like, oh, you're winning a national title. Like it's to make a team or like whatever. And so I was, I was, you know, I went in there like thinking I was going to win and I did and you know, I just don't think I, I don't think I ever go into a meet not thinking I'm going to win. Talk, and, to me, talk to me about the world championships. Ooh, that one. Worlds was rough the day of and, and prelims. And this is my first world championships at Doha. Mm-hmm. So I remember talking to Tom Walsh a lot and we actually yeah. had a bet on it. Um, because I said I could win and he was like, you're not going to win. It's too hard. Like your first time. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to win. And so we actually had a bet on it. Um, and I remember he did not wait. He texted me like two hours after I, <laughs> after I did that and was like, send that 200. <laughs> no, but he, but he did. He texted me and was like, ha ha, like I told you. And I was like, yeah, but he, we had just, I just remember we had like this little bet. He was just like, you're not like, it's harder than you think. And I was like, you don't know me, but he was right. Like it's a whole different, ant- like, oh, it was so terrifying. Cause I remember I, I warmed up the day before and I was, I was throwing bombs and I was like, Oh, it's over for everybody. But then the minute I stepped in that stadium, my heart just dropped and I was like, Oh, it's so real. You know, like it was so real, so fast. And I just remember I was talking to my training partner now too, Darrell Hill, uh, then the day after, uh, prelims. And I was like, that was insane and he was like right like he was like it's different than you think isn't it and I was like it's so much different like it's I I think I'm happy though because I I I know that I I went to like every diamond league every like I went to every 
meet. So I was, yeah. I knew I was kind of tired, but at that time I didn't really have a choice. Like I was still trying to prove that like I should, they should even allow me to go to these meets, you know, because it was my first year, mm-hmm. but it was, I think it's a lot different than people, you know, think it is <laughs> like, like I, I think I went in there with like the most confidence out of everybody, but it didn't mean anything once those lights hit you. What was the scary thing? Was it the crowd? Was it knowing that you were on the biggest venue? I think part of it too was just like the expectation of me. Like there was clearly like, I didn't go in there ranked eight, like seventh or whatever I got. Like I went in there ranked second. Like I should have, you know, it was a whole different thing. Like, I think it was like, I didn't just go in there and be like, oh, this is my first world. Like, let me see what I can do. I went in there with people saying she should be do, she should do this good, you know? And I think that, that pressure and then like just seeing it all start, I was like, oh my goodness, it's crazy. And I didn't even watch the meet over until like a couple like months ago. Like I hadn't even watched the meet because I was so disappointed. And I remember saying, I didn't want to hear Dan talking about how good I was supposed to do and then not doing good. And then when I watched, it was, he was like, you know, he's saying all the things that I had done and then I didn't do those things and I was just mortified to watch it. But Ryan made me. (laughs) He forced me to. What did you learn from the Doha experience? Um, I just think that like, I, I, I know now, like, like how much pressure it feels like and stuff. Um, I don't think I had like much to learn. Like, I I think it seems like because how bad I did that, like, there was a lot of like room to like learn things. But I think in reality, the only thing I really messed up on is like, I, I didn't prepare myself really for like the pressure and stuff that people had told and people told me to, you know, but like I maybe got overly confident when it came to worlds. So I think now I know to kind of, you know, take it back a notch maybe once it hits the world stage and, and go back to the basics kind of thing. How are you preparing yourself with, you know, I've just got all my information from the, um, Tokyo LLC about going to Tokyo. This will be my 10th Olympics that I'm covering uh, for track and field. And um, I still think it's a 50, 50 shot, you know, Um, how do, how are athletes talking about it? About the Olympics? Yeah. Um, I think we think a lot more than 50, 50, just based on like the information we're being given and also the diamond going and stuff like that. So I think a lot of us are more confident in that that it's going to be going. So most of us are pretty much preparing for it to happen. <laughs> Sorry, my dog. And um, Don't worry about it. Do, do you, um, one of the things that we were told was there's probably not going to be an audience. Will that be easier for you or will that be tougher for you? I just got back from the, some European indoor meets on mm-hmm. um, Germany and France. And honestly, without the audience, like they played like, the stuff and whatnot they played like the music or whatever not the music they played like fake crowd cheers and stuff and honestly like you realize real quick that you don't even notice them like real quick you don't I didn't even I forgot that there was no one in the stands like you're so enveloped in yourself um and honestly like those meets like I think when you've experienced those meets they ran very safely and very smoothly and that's what makes me think like there's more chance because they were, and those are indoor meets. Like imagine how much easier it is outdoors to keep people safe. But like we were, you know, I felt fair. Like I felt good being there because I had COVID and I'm not doing that again. (laughs) So I'm pretty sure I'm like, no, I'm not, no, no. So I just know that like, I felt really safe there. They were very, but it wasn't overly like, it didn't like affect my training or like, make me feel any type of way really. So I thought that was really good, but yeah, I think, I think they can run it safely. If you know, I'm sure they're figuring it out. There's probably people that are getting paid money to, (laughs) to figure it out, you know, but Um, we're all, I think just training that it's going to happen. What meets did you go to in Germany? I went, I was on the, the indoor tour. I went to the one in, um, Karlsruhe and, uh, Lieben. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. What'd you think of what you think of leaving? 
Oh my gosh, I liked it a lot. The yeah. indoor track where we were at, we stayed there and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. I was like, this is great. <laughs> but I imagine with people, that place is really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I did. Uh, I hit all the world indoor tour in nineteen, and absolutely loved the meets. They did. Uh, Tow room Poland was a lot of fun too. So it's just. Uh, yeah, I, they had boys there, even though the boys aren't on the tour. So that made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Because they had men's shot put. Men's shot put isn't on the tour this year. We are, so, but whatever. What Women's is the, shot. We don't, we don't get a lot of, uh, we don't get a lot of love. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. One thing, because we're women, and the two things, because we barely can get people to understand throwing in general, you know? Um, and, I mean, I'm not holding it against people to be like, I'm not being like, oh, it's because we're chicks. I really do think a lot of it stems from, like, a lot of people don't understand throwing. But it's not mainstream enough, I think, is our problem. And 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 I think a lot of us talk about how we how we want people to see the cool shit we do. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> the cool okay. Stuff, the cool not stuff a problem. Here, but, not a problem. But, um, but we don't really, I, I think we need to, you know, put ourselves out there a little more than we do but it's scary (laughs) like we're especially like the u.s i feel like we're competing with so many world-class athletes all over the u.s like in every sport it's a little hard to be like hey come look at us fat guy spinning in a circle (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this one at you you're in a room and you've got 12 sports producers okay and they do and they do basketball and they do soccer and they do walleye shows so what are you going to tell them is cool about the women's shot put? How would you Even explain I just, that? I just think like throwing in general. Okay. I, would, I just think people don't understand like, or just track and field in general isn't even as, as, as mainstream in the U S especially as I think it should be, but people don't understand. Like I think track and field is the basics of what your sports are. Yes. Running, jumping, throwing without us. Like you're nothing like pure athletics is what it is. And I think, what, I think first off, we need to change the way we present it media wise, because nobody wants to sit around for four hours and watch us. And that's fair enough. But I just think like we are we are sports like like I think there there needs to be like some respect on the fact that like what they do. You know what I mean? Like it's insane, like running, jumping, throwing insane things like and and throwers too. like all throwers. People don't think we're out here sprinting and jumping. Of course we are. Just like the jumpers are throwing overhead shots. Like we all like m- melt into this thing of just like pure athleticism that I think needs to be respected a little more. Well, I remember in the seventies when Brian Oldfield did the superstar show and he went like 1085 in the hundred and, you know, and, and I think it shocked a lot of people. He ran against Bruce Jenner at the time. And uh, it was a pretty interesting, it was a fun show they did for, Three or four years. Um, so I see you have a hundred meter PB of twelve twenty seven. Um, Actually, than that, I don't know why it's always twelve twenty seven. I did run a a, a sub twelve for sure my senior year, but they cool. I've never put it on my thing. All right. Well, we'll, we'll if you tell me what it is, we'll send it out there and we'll shake some people up. We'll keep we'll keep it fun. Um, what what's cool about the shot put? Everything. Well, then tell me. Tell me. I, I'm a I mean, guy who comes. I, I mean, I I love the shot. Like I actually go and watch the shot, the hammer, the javelin. I've interviewed Roller. You know, I interviewed Ryan a bunch of times. I get him to talk about. He's surprised that I can actually say, "Yeah, I watch your guys' feet in the ring. Your feet in the ring, so I know how quick you are." Uh, yeah. When I when I coached junior college, John Paul was my throw coach, and he built our rings at Foothill too. And he was like the Zen ring guy. And it was, he was explaining to me how you can make a quick ring. And then also mm-hmm. how to watch people's feet in the ring. What it, it's a speed event. Explain the shot a little bit for our readers. Um, I think for me, it's like, it's very strength based, but it's very technical. And I think people forget the technicality because they just see you know, buff people throwing heavy things. And, you know, in the end, mass moves mass. We know that. 
But I don't think, like you said, people realize that there's a lot of technical aspect, especially for rotators, that is so specific. And like, like there's so many, I think because of how intense like rotation is, like there's so many places to like m- make mistakes. And so it's like, I think it's more technical than people think. I think people think we just are like big ball, throw big ball, ball go far, you know, but it's, it's pretty crazy. I remember like Ryan was doing, Ryan did, I watched like all of Krauser's interviews because he is just, a, he's a freak. Like the fact that he's not like as known as Usain Bolt blows my mind. Like he's yeah. a freak. Yeah. And so um, I remember him talking about the guy when he was saying like, if you put the amount of like pressure onto the ball that we do, it'd probably break every bone in your arm. Like if you use the force we do, because you're just, you just don't have the the body for it. And I think we're strong and we're fast and, and, and we, and we can jump. And like, I just think it's amazing. I think shot is so fun and cool and people need to love it more, <laughs> but I'm biased probably. <laughs> What's your vertical jump like? Oh, I don't know. I was doing box today though. And my team was harassing me because I thought I couldn't do a high one, but I did, but I, I don't Ooh. really know. I haven't done tests or anything in a while, but uh, I'm sure we'll do them eventually, but we haven't done with, I think I just switched to rotational, uh, in 2019 with Ryan. Wow. So it's, it's, it's like, I haven't really gotten time to, you know, get all my maxes and all that stuff. Cause me and Ryan have always just been trying to get me going 2020 would have been a good time, but I had a really rough season mm-hmm. and I'm not afraid to share that because I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know? <laughs> I want to get that from you in a second, but I want to talk to you about changing from the glide to the rotational. What's been the hardest thing for you? Um, I think. Cielo. He's chewing, my dog's chewing on something. I'm sorry. Okay, you, Come here. Can you check? Um, uh, he came. Um, I think the hardest thing I think was definitely, and I tell this to all the rotators uh, because I know like, certain people switching are a lot of people are switching over now too. Um, because unless you're built like Valerie Adams as a woman, the glide's going to be hard, uh, or gong and stuff like just strong. But anyway, uh, I think the hardest part when you first go is to just see that drop in, in, in like your skill. So you go from, I went from being like, probably like a really, I was a really good glider. I would say not like the best, but I was pretty good. And then you just drop down to being like beginner again. And that's mm-hmm. like really hard to get behind. It's very hard mentally to, to keep pushing when you go from throwing like, Oh, I'm throwing 17, 50 at practice. Boom. Down to like freaking 15. You're like, oop, <laughs> like it hits you a little hard. Uh, but yeah, I think more so less technique issues. And it's more mentally that it took me a while to be like, It'll be fine. Just you got, I put all my eggs in Ryan's basket. Like I was like, I was about to retire. I was done. I couldn't throw any farther. I was just like, what is happening? So I, you know, I got in contact with Ryan and I was like, here, here's this lump of clay, do something with it. And then that's when he said, well, you're going to rotate. And I was just like, I don't care. I'm about to, I'm about to retire anyway, you know? And so, yeah, I was just mentally being like, I'm, freaking a beginner again i'm a beginner again i'm not i don't know what i'm doing and that was hard is ryan your coach or advisor or both ryan's everything (laughs) i'd probably be a lost soul without ryan whiting (laughs) friend coach and when before he hurt himself training partner he made sure to do everything with us he was always lifting with us and stuff um but yeah like he's definitely and that's probably for my whole team i would say says the same thing he's also our athletic trainer doing our rehab like ryan is literally like the the pole holding this whole thing up (laughs) for sure you you just said that 2021 has been a challenge for you what's the challenge talk to me about the challenges um after all the corona stuff covid stuff not supposed to say Corona anymore. But after all the COVID stuff, I just, I think like I, I hit like a wall and it, it was bad timing because I did bad at worlds. And so I think going into indoors, like I don't even think I did, but two meets or something indoors. I literally did like a meet and then 
nationals or something. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have that big of an indoor season. I, I don't remember. But I just remember like I was still so like distraught over worlds because I, 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 everybody says like, well, what happened at worlds? And I just say, I should have won. And I didn't like, that's literally, I have nothing else to say to you. I was throwing 22 high with the three, the day before 21 with the three, five, I was throwing twenties all day with like the three, seven, five. Like I was, I was killing it training in Doha. Like I should have won. And I didn't, I went there and, you know, I always say like, I wasn't like, but at some point it's just you have to be an athlete like it has nothing to do with this or that or all these little technical you just have to be an athlete and do what you're supposed to do and I just say I didn't do that you know and so geez. and so I think um like going into the season I was already upset you know like because I I felt like I let so many people down especially Ryan and of course he he I I think that what happened is because of that, I kind of separated myself from Ryan in 2020. And that really like that, that was just because, you know, like you just think, Oh, well, they, they're going to be disappointed. Like why I don't want to waste his time. Like you really like get down on yourself mentally. And I think with, when that happened, I, I was separating myself from Ryan and it was almost like we didn't even have time to fix it because then like COVID hit, you know? So then it was just like all this stuff. So then through 2020, it was like, super rough. And then, and now I got sick when I got sick, everything was fine. But since then I've lost, like, I lost a lot of weight and stuff that I, I not, wasn't planning on losing and stuff because I have a bunch of post COVID like issues right now that I'm trying to get dealt with. And it's, it's just a lot. And so I think I lost a lot of motivation, but it was mainly mental because I like separated myself from my, my coach, and my team. And then, then when COVID happened, like it was like 10 times worse because then we had to be forced separated at first, you know? And it was, it was, it was definitely, it was more of a mental thing that happened to me in 2020, but I'm definitely getting back on track now. Like I, I, I definitely like hit a good, a good thing now. And I'm kind of getting back in the road, but it was, it was really rough. Like it really sucked. <laughs> How did you find out you had COVID? Um, I remember I woke up one day for practice and I went to drink my coffee and I tasted nothing. And I told Ryan, I cannot come to practice because I taste nothing. <laughs> so I'm not going to get anybody sick. And so then I got tested. I remember it took forever for my test. And honestly, like I was pretty upset, like, because when they told me I had it and all this stuff, i just felt like brushed off by them. And I was, I was all worried because the news told me I was going to die, but they were just like, Bleh. and so I was already like upset about it and just like thinking, oh, I'm so sick. Like what's going to happen? Like, nah, nah, nah. but it wasn't so bad. Like the during COVID it's, it's been the like post COVID like symptoms that I have are really bad. That's, that's my only like during it wasn't so bad, but when I found out it was, I was so worried. <laughs> Because I was like, what's going to happen? And they basically sent me home and told me to drink tea unless I can't breathe. And I was like, I'm I'm panicking. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was it wasn't so bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> but I, <clears throat> speaking of COVID, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I just like I was like telling everybody because a lot of people have talked to me because I was very open about being sick because I think you should be. Mm -hmm. as athletes because I mean like a lot of these younger athletes you know like they look up to us whether we we think we're like popular or not like there's always a younger generation of people doing what you do that look up to you and so I just like I made sure I just like make sure to be like open about it like if you guys like need any help and so people have been like hey this has happened to me what did you do when I try and help people you know um but in the moment it wasn't so great but now I'm trying to help people <laughs> with and it. I'm, I'm going to give you the names of five athletes. You're allowed three to five words to describe them. Okay. Uh, we'll start with an easy one. Valerie Adams. Strong, funny as heck. <laughs> Best shot for <putter> ever. <laughs> okay, good. I like that. Five that's, words. That's good. Um, Ryan Krauser. Tall, <laughs> fast, Freak. <laughs> okay. 
I used I Freak in an interview about him last week with uh, a website. Freak. And I, I said, you know, he's a genius. And, and he goes, what do you mean by a genius? He's a freak, you know? And, and he's just, it's amazing. Freak. And I, I look at him and I just go, this, I mean, I watched his vertical jump and it was phenomenal. Um, in the best way possible, freak. <laughs> okay. Um, Christina Schmanitz, have you competed against her? Yeah, I love her. Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, Schmanitz, I would say strong, also sweet, um, good shot putter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, she, she's very nice. I like her. We were, we just competed uh, in the indoor tour where she was one of the people I was competing with. Cool. Yeah. Ryan Whiting. <laughs> um, I would say uh, caring. Um, oh gosh, hold on. Uh, talented. Very smart. People don't understand this man is has an engineering degree. And then selfless. I think Ryan's probably the most selfless human being on earth. Cool. Um, who's your favorite track athlete of all events? Of all events of all time? All time. Um, it has to be Valerie because I didn't know track until her. Cool. Okay. And if you were not doing the shot put, what event would you do? The 100. Totally cool. Totally cool. Okay. People think they see me and they think I've always been this size. I could have gone either way. You know, mm -hmm. I could have gone the way of getting a 100 body and going that way. But I went this way, you know, building muscle and getting bulky. Do you remember Pam Dukes, American no. shot putter? Did you ever? Okay, so Pam was a, a U.S. shot putter in the, the 90s. She was a two-time Olympian. MBA from Stanford, uh, became a Vogue model. Um, and I did a clinic with her. It was called Just for Women Only. And I did 200 high school girls. We did it in Centerville, Ohio. The TV crew was women. All the athletes are women. I was not allowed to go in there, even though I was sponsoring it. And the deal was I wanted the high school girls to get a chance to talk to athletes about being a woman athlete. And the biggest question, we did it for 10 years, the biggest question every year was, hey, I can beat my boyfriend in tennis and basketball. Should I let him win once in a while? And Pam and all the other athletes said, absolutely not. Right. No. Um, you had mentioned early on a little bit about stuff being the shot put. Do you think sometimes it's because it's women's sports and we value women's sports less sometimes? In men's sports on the global stage? Yeah, because I, I think that's just like a universal thing. Like, um, it does suck though. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it I does. think it, does. it is. It does have to do a lot with like, I just, I think it's from history though. Like, we, can, we historically weren't in sports. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. so it didn't start off. To, so I don't think, I don't think women, I think, my problem is we think that we need to get men to watch us. We just need to get women to watch us because it's the same as all the men watching football and stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we yeah. just need women to understand, like we, you don't have to sit and watch the NBA. You can watch the WNBA. You don't have to sit and watch blah, blah. And one of the things I like about track is that we're co-ed and like people go, Oh, well the pay rate and all this. And I'm like, the reason we get paid the same is because we bring in the same viewers because we're, we're in the same meet. Yeah. So it makes sense for us. So I don't, we don't have to get that like pay thing a lot, but I think where they hit us is stuff like them not putting the indoor tour in Poland instead doing the boys because they yeah. have good Polish throwers there. Right. I get it. But like, I think that's where they hit us. It's like, you pay yeah. us the same, but if we're not there, how, how are we getting paid? And yeah. um, I think a lot of misconception too, is that they kept trying, they keep trying to like, oh, we need to find out how to make meets go faster. So remember they cut our time to 30 seconds for a while? Yeah. And I so badly want to be like, every shot put meet I've been to has never take longer than an hour. 45 minutes is about usual from start to finish, warm-ups to everything. Like, And so I'm like, how are you? Like, there's so many other things that could be shortened in track and field, but this 45-minute event is not it. 
And then also we want recognition and we want to know why prelims of, of like semifinals and, and quarterfinals of races are playing during our final. You know, there's just a lot of things that like, like it's just like a punch in the face. And for the girls, it's just like not even thinking we're worth putting in a meet it just sucks, you know? Oh no. And like yeah. we're doing the same thing. Uh, like, we're doing the same thing and people go, well, your ball is four pounds. Okay. Well, I'm not loaded with testosterone. That's why my, I mean, 4k, that's why yeah. my ball is lighter, you know, like it's the yeah. same thing, but it's just our version of it. And I really do think it starts from just women can watch us. Like it's like, we just need women to know that like they can be interested in sports that aren't dude sports, you know? Well, no, in the UK, the biggest track audience is women on TV. Like like and, I, that's cool. Like, yeah, what? I think it makes sense. And there was a um, in the '90s, there used to be a meet in Portland, Oregon, called the Adidas um, Classic. And Paul Banta, the meet director, put the shot on right before everything else. And there'd be four thousand people in the stands for the whole meet. There'd be a thousand people watching the shot. Ryan competed in it. Uh, I mean, all the the guys from the time. And it was a lot, John Cadena. It was a blast. And it gave the shot the attention that it needs, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that, well, that's, that's, see, to me, how much room do we need for shot put? You know what I mean? We need, what, 30 meters of room, 40 yeah. meters of room? Put us anywhere. Like, they do all these street meets for pole vault. You can put us anywhere. Like, they've done street meets. Like, you, if you can't, if we can't make people come to track and field, like, throw it in their face. Like, Put beach meets this cool stuff that could happen and it's really simple we don't need that much space and all you need to do is wrap some people around and put some food trucks and you're set but it, i just think like there's this like mindset where we're just stuck and that we've do, done it the same way for so long and and i think this we don't get the people who are known in our sport the sprinters are too busy making millions of dollars to forget that yeah. We're all on a team. Like we need you guys to talk about it too. Like you guys get the attention so you don't notice, but like our sport is dying and you're going to come with it. You know, if, if it dies, like, Oh no, we got, we've got, to, we've got to, I mean, I think that's what Christian Taylor's all about with his athletics athletes association. It means a lot. Which I like, I, I, I appreciate that, but I, I think the start of that, I was more positive for than where it's at now. Cause it just seemed like, at first it was all about the athletes and then now it's becoming more about like other things. And I, I think it needs to get back to, we have athletes that are working at that are working minimum wage jobs so that they can train because they don't make money. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. We have high level athletes. I mean, very high level know. athletes in the U S having to work jobs because they don't have money. Yeah. That's not okay to me. <laughs> I, I agree. Well, Chase, you've survived 39 minutes with me. You've done great. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I hope you you continue to feel better. And I look forward to meeting you face-to-face -face in a meet this, this spring or this summer. And uh, I want to be able to congratulate you when you do your shot put, PB. And, yeah. uh, okay. But yeah. uh, but thank you again for your time today. Um, we will send you some links with the interview. And you can use it anywhere. And say hi to Ryan for me, please. And, I will. Uh, it's really been fun. Thank you for educating us about the shot. And thank you for showing your enthusiasm. That means a lot to me, you know, and it means a lot to our, our viewers. So um, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. And we featured uh, Chase Easley today. She's the 2019 indoor and outdoor U.S. shot put champ. She won the 2020 indoor as well. And we're going to see her win some other big things too. So Chase, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater. This is socialing the distance. This is the epilogue where I, you know, have a one-way conversation. But many of my conversations are one-way. Uh, I do try to entertain myself. But today we featured Chase Easley. She is a rather colorful shot putter. Uh, she uh, is the uh, 2009. But no s Ely. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, let you me redo did say that. it wrong at the end of her interview too, and I could tell she noticed. So oh yeah. shit. We got to redo that then, okay? No can, we, can you change it at the end of the interview too or not? 
No, but I'd say just own it in the epilogue and say, I mispronounced it at the end. It is Ely. I okay. apologize. You know, just do your normal, you know, okay. thing. Okay. Right. 1098-765-4321. Hey, sports fans. It's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. Uh, this is the epilogue, and today we featured Chase Ely, which I mispronounced her name at the end of the interview. And Chase, I'm very sorry. I called you easily. It's Chase Ely. And I like it when people pronounce my name correctly, so I should be able to do that with other people. So my apologies. So Chase Ely is the 2019 indoor and outdoor shot put champion. She also won the shot in uh, 2020 on the indoor uh, champs. And we had a great interview. Um, it's really interesting sometimes. Interviews, I, I, I never know how an interview is going to go. Uh, some people are really into it. Some people are not. You kind of bring it out of them. Um, Chase was into it and it's like watching an athlete get warmed up and she talked about a lot of things. Um, she talked about women's sports, which she very much believes in. And she talked about track and field in general. Uh, she calls it the sport that, uh, everything else is based on running, jumping and throwing, you know, it's, it's, it's the basis for everything. And she doesn't think it gets the respect it deserves. And she definitely doesn't think that uh, the throws in in general and women's throws in particular. Um, how did she get into the shot? She was inspired by Valerie Adams, Dame Valerie Adams, uh, the Olympic gold medalist, world champion. Amazing interview and just a great athlete. But so that was pretty cool. But Chase has done the uh, shot put. Her best is 1968. That's 64 feet, six and three quarters inches. She's uh, dallied with the hammer at 56 meters. That's 183.8 in a, a quarter. She's thrown the javelin 46.8 which uh, meters, which is 153.6.5. She said that's what messed up her um, elbow, so she won't be doing that again. She's gone the 100 in 12.27. Tells me she's broken 12 seconds. She started out with the 100, and uh, her sister was doing track, and she needed a couple other events, so she tried the shot. Really liked the shot, but really didn't get into the shot until about her sophomore, junior year in college, and then started putting it together. Um, her co current coach right now is Ryan Whiting. We know Ryan, world champion, and just a great guy. And Ryan coaches down at Mesa College in, near Phoenix. And um, she said that uh, she was about to retire. And she said, tell me what to do. I, I don't know what uh, I need to do. And so Ryan got her to go to the spin, to rotational. She had been a glider. And, um, and she's coming around. Um, her biggest disappointment sounds like has been Doha, uh, where she was ranked second in the world and she thought she would do well and she did not. That happens a lot of times. Um, Thomas Walsh, the uh, former world champion and uh, a character into himself, uh, told her that she wouldn't win the first time. She made a bet, lost 200 bucks on that. So at least I like that confidence. But what I liked about Chase was her attitude, her openness. Um, she just went to some meets in Europe, and she's recovering from COVID. And it sounds like she's dealing with some tough stuff. Um, I always respect an athlete for their honesty. I don't have to agree with them, but a lot of things that Chase uh, Ely said, I do agree with. I don't think the shot gets the respect it deserves. I think that Ryan Krauser is a physical genius. She affectionately calls him a freak, which I did in a story on the manual uh, website. Um, she also doesn't think track and field gets the respect it needs. And I think that's true. And she thinks that we should change the way we do it on TV. And I'd love to ask her about that in the future. And perhaps we will. But I think there's 40 good minutes there of a wonderful interview with Chase Ely. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. This is Larry Eater for Socialing the Distance. This is the epilogue. We featured Chase Ely today, the 2019 U.S. Indoor and Outdoor Shot Put Champion, as well as the 2020 Indoor Champion as well. We hope you enjoy the interview. Thanks to Mike Deering for producing Socialing the Distance and putting up with me on a daily basis. If you like Run Blog Run, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
If you love us, subscribe on the YouTube. We have 369 videos plus audios for 2020. We have 2,500 audios and videos since 2010. And uh, we've got Socially in the Distance. We have Athletics Chat. We have Convos with Larry. We have daily updates on the global sport. We have uh, pithy columns from me. You've got columns from Justin Lagat, David Hunter, Stuart Weir, um, Alphonse Yuk, the youngster uh, with EME News. So we've got most things covered. Plus, we get help from the federations, uh, World Athletics, European Athletics, the guys at British Athletics, uh, and our friends at Athletics Weekly and Track and Field News. So a lot of great people who love the sport are p- helping us put things out. We hope you enjoy it. Stay safe in the pandemic. Wear a mask indoors. If you're outdoors, wear a mask. If you can't be six feet separated, exercise, hydrate, eat well, sleep. Tell somebody every day that you love them. Talk to your friends. Okay? That's it.